Welcome back to the vlog. As you can tell, today we have two special guests with us. We have Chuan over here who is hitting his first shot here on a par 3. And up next, we have... While we're waiting for Chuan to see his ball end, we have Joey over here hitting a 9 iron as well on this par 3. So both these golfers are single handicappers and I thought I'd show you guys a little bit almost like a highlight reel of what helps them become single handicappers and what you can do to help your own game as well. So over here, Chuan hit his shot a little bit over, so he had a chip. It's not an easy chip, but as you can tell, he hit a pretty decent one. It's important there to know that hitting the green is very important. You don't want to leave yourself back in the rough and give yourself another chip, which is exactly what Chuan did. He still leave himself quite a difficult putt, but he's still putting for par versus trying to chip and then maybe getting a more difficult lie and possibly making a bogey from there. So as you can tell, Joey hit the green. He was on the left side, so he actually hit towards the wider side of the green, which is a smart play and gave him a pretty long putt, but it is an uphill putt. So a simple putt for birdie and a tap in par for him. Pretty easy, huh? So one of the things that I think you notice is both of them actually play pretty different golf so it's quite interesting to see how their handicaps are almost the same and what are their differences and what are their similarities as well so Chuan made a great putt there to save his par the next hole is a par 5 and Chuan definitely has an advantage on this hole he is a long hitter as you can tell he has a compact swing and it goes pretty far so he will definitely be able to take advantage of this hole if he hits a good drive and that he did so after this, as you can tell, Joey is actually hitting a 3-wood which is the smarter, safer play on this hole. As I've always said, if just because it's a par 5 does not mean you need to take out a driver. Chuan and Joey were both partners in this competition, in this little game that we were having. So Joey decided that it would be better for him to play the smart layup shot here. So over here he's just using a 9-iron and just hitting it short of the water. As you will be able to notice after this, the pin position today is not the easiest. So as Joey would probably have had to hit a wood, it was much smarter for him to lay up anyways. Tron on the other hand is going to be hitting an iron. As you can tell, he's hitting a 5 iron, so it does make sense for him to go for the green. With a 5 iron, he definitely knows that he can control it enough, and he also knows that there is space on the left side for him to miss. As you can tell, he is aiming more towards the center of the green rather than the pin, and that is the smart play, making the smart choice to choose the right aim, especially when you're going for greens and things like that. 90 yards? It's right on my, it's right on my number. So as you heard, Joey laid up to his number, which is 90 yards. And I feel like this is something that a lot of people mistake. I think that not a lot of higher handicappers should really try to lay up to their favorite number, unless it is a range that they like. So for instance, 90 yards. If they are good between 80 to 100 yards, then they could consider laying up to that favorite distance. If not, I feel like they should just hit whatever club is most comfortable for them at that moment in time when they're hitting their layup. Because the chances of them being 100% accurate and being able to hit 290 yards is not as high as somebody like Joey who can lay up, hit a club, lay up and know that he's going to get it maybe 90, 85, 95 yards around there. And obviously he knows that those are not distances that he struggles with. If not, he would not lay up to that distance. But I find that a lot of higher handicappers get the advice that they should lay up to their favorite distance rather than just hitting a 3 wood or whatever wood or whatever iron. But I, th I think that sometimes that does not really work out because maybe they don't hit the perfect shot or they hit too perfect of a shot and end up closer than they thought they were going to. And if they only like a specific distance, going shorter or further is not going to help them get that distance and it's just going to leave them with another difficult shot. That is especially something that you do not want to do after you decided to lay up and you know that's just not a smart play so i find that lower handicap cappers can definitely well use this strategy of laying up to their favorite distance on to the next hole which is a par four this par four is of decent distance and there is a bunker on the right side there is a little bit more room on the left side than it seems but chuan is look Oh, he looks like he's going nice. towards that bunker. And unfortunately, as you'll be able to tell later, he actually does reach that bunker. So I think maybe driver is not the play for this hole. 
especially because if you try to hit only the left side of the fairway, the fairway does get a lot more narrow, so maybe a through it for Chuan next time. Joey's going with a driver as well. And one of the things that you'll be able to notice from these two players is that one of the ways that helps them become a single handicapper is they have a one-way miss. So Joey missed that a little bit and it's down the left side but it does take a good kick and comes back into the fairway so he's fine. For his next shot he has a 7 iron over here and he said he actually wanted to try and aim just towards the center of the green because it is a pretty tucked pin but he just pushes it a little bit so he's ending up on the right side of the green but it's not too bad there, that's a good place to miss it. And Chuan as I said is in the bunker. So it does have a pretty high lip so he might be underclubbed here and that's why he actually went to change his club before this. He was taking a 9 iron but he walked in, didn't think that he would get it over the lip and decided to go with a pitching wedge. So as I said before again, being a single handicapper means that you do need to know when the risks are worth it and when it's not. So for him, hitting a 9 iron might be a better club and probably the club that he needs to get it to the green. But hitting a pitching wedge makes sure that it goes over the lip, so that is more important. As you can tell, he has a pretty difficult chip over here. It is downhill and there's not much green for him to land on. So it's definitely not an easy one, but he's still next to the green and chipping for his third shot, which is a lot better than if he were to get stuck in the bunker and would have to hit another shot to get out. He hits a really good chip over there, but the greens just aren't catching that much and aren't giving much spin, especially from the rough. So that is a very good chip and he's still putting for par, but it's just not as close as you would think he would get with a chip like that. Joey as well, as you can tell, his ball rolls out quite a bit. So the greens are definitely pretty tough around this area. And this is Chuan's putt for par. Just a little bit under read, but still a walk away with a bogey. So as something that's going to help you, well, that's something that's going to help you decrease your score and your handicap, which is knowing how to walk away with a bogey when you're in trouble. This is Joey's putt for par. As you can tell, the green and the pin position is definitely not easy. And the one thing I do need to say, even though you're going to see Joey make a great putt over here for par, is that just because you're a single handicapper doesn't mean you always shoot single handicap scores. So actually, I think one of the characteristics of a single handicapper is that they do play well under pressure. These few holes that I'm recording are actually, the players would agree themselves, one of the best holes that they're playing. <laughs> so, because I took out the camera and started filming them and they know that I had to perform, they do perform better and that's why they play better in tournaments as well. And it's the same with professionals as well. Most of the time when we practice, we might not play our top game because, well, obviously that's not always the case, but sometimes the focus level is different and things like that. But it is different because you need to know when to perform because you can't always be performing. So... What I was going to say is just because their handicap is, for instance, 4, doesn't mean they're always going to shoot 76. 76 is maybe their average score, so sometimes they might shoot 80 and sometimes they might shoot 72. And that is why their handicap is a 4. So for them to get to a scratch, obviously it's just more consistency, reducing the number on top, so that 80 dropping it to a 76 and dropping their lower score to maybe a 68. And that is when you can get a scratch handicap, it's when your lower score decreases and your higher score decreases as well. So this is really something that I think a lot of people mistake. I think once they, f they see your handicap, they think, oh, your handicap 4 means you play 76. And that's the case sometimes, but that's not always the case. So I think you need to understand that if you're a 4 handicapper and you shoot 80, that's fine as well. You can't always be expecting yourself to shoot at the top of your game. So anyway, back to the video. Joey hit his second shot here into this bunker and he hit an amazing bunker shot from there and it actually almost hit the hole and leaped it. So Chuan on the other hand is here for his second shot and he's putting for birdie. One of the things I also, you would also notice is both of them have very different putting styles and it's pretty interesting to see how putting is so personalized that you can literally use whatever you want. People always ask me like about my grip and stuff and my putting stroke but at the end of the day 
you really should part with whatever feels best to you. There is no right or wrong. I mean, there is a little bit of right or wrong in terms of technicality and you know, the parting stroke, basically bringing it on the right, oh, the right plane and stuff. But there really isn't a right and wrong when it comes to a lot of things in golf, and that's what I personally believe, because I I think there's so many different unique swings out there, parting strokes, whatever it is. So if you find something that works for you, just roll with it and be confident in it. Practice it. Make sure it's consistent. And that is the main thing, consistency. You really want a consistent, repeatable stroke, swing, whatever it is. That is how you're going to get lower scores and a lower handicap and play better golf. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little vlog. Thank you very much to Joey and Chuan and see you guys next time.